Carolyn Doobie here, and today I'm going to show you a day when I couldn't make a decision. I wanted to be creative, I had a little bit of time, and I just couldn't figure out what to do. It was like too many choices. So I decided to turn to my friends over in the Google community called A Colorful Playground. And I decided that whatever I saw there, whatever I was drawn to first, I would somehow use that for my jumping off point. So I decided to use these pinks here and these are distress paints that I have and I'm not real I'm just putting color on there with no plan. And the reason I chose the pinks and now the green is because I was drawn to Lori Arnold's art journal spread there. And I really liked her pink and green, so that's why I decided to use it. Well, Lori had a lighter green in hers and I really actually sort of more of an aqua-ish. And so I decided to go with some white. And I would have thought I would have put it on the green first, but apparently no, I put it on the pink first. <laughs> but I'm softening up that green, going for a softer, more pastel look. And along the way, I decided to add a little bit more pink here, take some pink off there. I don't really know why yet. I'm just sort of following the impulses. Well, the next thing that I saw on the playground was Tracy Woodsford's circles and jelly print post. And you know what? I decided to grab a jelly print and cut circles out of it and add that to it. And I'm using every last little bit and scrap of that print. And I'm not, again, not really sure exactly where it's going, but it'll go somewhere. And I'm not gonna overthink this. I'm just going with whatever I saw on the playground and letting that inspire me and take me where I'm going. Well, of course, I need to glue these down somehow. And of course the paint's still wet, but that doesn't matter. I'm just slapping some gel medium on the back of those things. And as I finished gluing these down, I realized I didn't know what I wanted to do next. So of course, I'm gonna go back to the playground and find some more inspiration there. Sherry Eddy's pencil sketches with these wonderful loose lines inspired me to grab a pencil and just add some very loose lines to this. I'm tracing around this pink blobby thing. I have no idea where that's going at this point. And I don't have to know, cause I'm just playing. Well, next I was drawn to Christina Young's post where she had these great blue dots with blues and yellows and greens. And I decided I'm gonna get some of those dots and what I'm doing using one of Michelle Ward's stencils here. And I had extra paint over there on my palette and I am doing this right into the wet paint because I am highly impatient and don't wanna wait for things to dry. And you know what? Once I've got that done, then I'm gonna head back over to the playground and find some more inspiration. Another Sherry Eddy piece grabbed my eye and it had all these great little bits of rubber stamping and words. So I grabbed some of my Donna Downey word stamps, stamped them right in the paint that I had. And I've got this sort of messy, smeary, imperfect bits of text added in. And this is also a great way to use up extra paint left on your palette. And I am putting them right on some water over there on a paper towel to make cleanup easy. At this point, the piece is starting to tell me what it wants. And it's saying, make those jelly printed circles a slightly darker color. As soon as I did that, it went not that dark. Well, now that you've added white, it's completely obscured. So I'm adding a little more white. I'm gonna add some um, airbrush medium to that high flow paint that I've got over there, trying to make it a little more translucent. And you know what it turns out is just use less paint. Turns out a little less paint makes it not so strong. <laughs> yes, so simple, it's kind of embarrassing. I want to make some fine lines on this to get some color and a little bit of scribble something on there. So I'm going to use a fine line applicator and these have this little piece of metal that goes down the tip so it doesn't clog, which has always been my issue with fine tip things because you know I'm not going to clean them out. And I have to say these things really don't clog. A huge thank you to Mary Beth Shaw for turning me onto these and just sort of opening my world with what I can do with these. I do have high flow paints in there and I don't like what I've done there. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and see if I can get some of it off without smearing or making too big a mess. And I got some of it off, so we'll just call that an oops, an outstanding opportunity that presented suddenly. And now I'm gonna grab another color. And for this one, I'm gonna do the yellow. Again, it's high flow paint that's in there and I'm gonna go around it a bit more. I'm gonna be a little less precise, if that's possible for me to be any less precise. And what I'm also doing is end up picking up some of the white paint, the acrylic paint that's on there. So I am gonna clean that off the tip because I imagine having you know, a heavy bodied white paint on there is going to cause some problems. So I decided at this point, the pink thing is probably a person. 
It's not really a great person shape, but I'm going to keep messing with it to make it a great person shape. And in the process, I'm going to basically do the hokey pokey. You put some paint on, you take some paint out, you put some paint on, you take some paint off, and you fiddle and mess with it and turn yourself all about. I'm just going to keep trying different things. I've given her football shoulders. I have given her strange arms. I've tried adding colors. Yeah, this just went on and on and on as I fiddle with this. And, and just, you know, if you can, just kind of let the hokey pokey run through your mind as I'm doing this. And of course, I wanted to start messing with some of the stuff around it. And along the way, what I'm creating is one giant oops after another. And I keep thinking, oh, no, this will do it. This will give me the look I want. No, no, wait, this will do it. Just a little bit more here. And along the way, I'm sort of messing up the background over there with the blue and the green that I liked. And it's just becoming one thing after another. I don't know if this has ever happened to you when you've done stuff, but boy, oh boy, it just keeps going and going with this one. And I keep thinking I've got it to a point that I like, and then something else happens and something else changes. And I add a little bit more here. So again, hokey pokey, you put the paint on, you take the paint off. You put the paint on, you take the paint off. Now this going back and forth with her really let me hear her story in my head and it's about just going and being fearless. So using my uplifting word stencil, I put in the words go be and I am going over them with a brush to kind of hide the whole fact that it's a stencil. And I want to put fearless there and I've got this image in my mind where I want it but I can't really see exactly where it's going to position. So I'm going to stencil out a mock one and see if I like how that goes and I do. So I'm going to stencil it right there. Now, since I didn't wait for anything to dry, I'm putting that extra piece of uh, index card there just to protect any smearage because I'm notorious for doing that since I don't let stuff dry. And then I'm just going to come in with a paintbrush and cover over those stencil lines. And as soon as I get those words finished and I'm like, yeah, I like it. All of a sudden the hokey pokey starts up again. You put a little paint on, you take a little paint off. You put a little paint on, you take a little paint off. And you know, <laughs> that is really sort of becoming the theme of this whole thing <laughs> is that hokey pokey back and forth. And I keep fiddling with it, messing with it, trying to figure something out. And along the way, I've totally obscured those green and blue dots that I loved so much. But that's not a problem because it's just an oops. These are outstanding opportunities presenting suddenly. And you know what? I'm just going to put the green back. I'm going to mix it with some white. I did it once. I can do it again. So you've gotten a look here at how I use the Google Plus community, a colorful playground, to get me started in playing and creating when I'm having a hard time making a decision. If you'd like to check it out, I'll have a link down for you below. And if you're new to Google Plus, not a problem because we're all learning it too. And I do have a section for questions and help about getting used to how Google Plus works. So come on over and learn all about it and be inspired by all the great stuff that's being shared. And if you're still watching this video, you're probably enjoying it. So I'd love it if you would share it with your friends who you think would enjoy watching this crazy hokey pokey too.